hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty. That is the fan on because it's so damn hot in this kitchen this makeup wouldn't last if it wasn't on. And this is the fourth Zodiac film for Aquarius. And it is, of course, Planets of the Zodiac. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio and Sagittarius. So, two star signs down tend to go. So if you want to find out exactly what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, which the ruling planet is for Aquarius and its colours and traits it allocates to said star sign, then my friends you have got the best seat in the house. As I have said very early days in my channel and am um, hearing many others pick up on. Grab a drink. Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy, because here it comes. Hey lovelies, welcome back from the intro. It has been, I will admit, quite a while since I last filmed. Um, I've been struggling with my depression more so than pain in the last few days so you have seen the first three of the Aquarius films chonk 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 one after the other like I like to do them and then you've had a bit of a gap for this fourth one for which I apologize uh, but this is the fourth in the series it is the planet of the zodiac and, as I said, we are dealing with Aquarius. Now, my book of notes and ideas and plans. The planet which governs Aquarius is Uranus, or as we used to call it, Uranus. Pause for immature giggles. Try not to be one of those people giggling immaturely. Right, I'm going to put a picture up here. Now, as you can see, Uranus, or Uranus, is just pale blue, one colour. So, this gives me a chance to show you a, a kind of a one and done look. So, because I haven't used them for a while, I'm going to use one of my Crow and Pebble pigments. This is... Uh, Curse of Dimensionality. This is one of the first ones of their pigments I got and it's the pastel blue. Okay, And I picked up this Boohoo brush because it was... I wanted to pick up a specific palette which then arrived broken which is annoying. Um, and I just I popped this on to kind of make the, the value up because it's only like a couple of quid I think it was. Uh, so I'm going to see what the Boohoo brush is like. Uh, yes, I still am nail-less and now I am acrylic-less as well. Um, my pointy nails were my nail, just with acrylic wraps on, there weren't any tips or anything. Um, I trimmed them down after about three and a half weeks because my nail appointment was about 10 days before the lockdown started. So a week into lockdown, I would normally have been looking to book in and, and get my infill done. 
um, so I trimmed them down short like they are now um, and then we're now we're now at the end of week three of lockdown and lockdown is not being lifted it's continuing for another week so I thought right okay the acrylic was all starting to lift I thought if I don't do something about this I'm going to end up with water getting under the nail and then I'm going to end up with stale water being trapped under there and that's what causes the green spots on your nails um, and I'm I'm quite proud of the fact that my nails are actually in pretty good nick for the fact they've had acrylic on them for 10 years um, so I very carefully sat there with some acrylic some acetone rather and an orange stick and I got all of the acrylic off my nails and then I massaged some cuticle gel into them cuticle oil into them left them overnight and then buffed them with one of those four-sided buffing things this morning and painted them so it feels extremely strange and the thing is my nails have always been paper thin that's why I got acrylic on them normally they don't grow above the height of my finger so far I've just got one this birdie finger which is still slightly above the length of my finger uh, but no doubt that will soon break anyway enough about my nails just that I'd share my first world problem I guess this now makes me low maintenance because nothing about me is artificial now because the only thing that was artificial about me before was my nails I've let the glitter hairs come through there's no silicon anywhere the only thing false or fake or artificial about me was my nails and even then it was actually my nails just with acrylic on the top so I kind of but anyway that's not what you came here for but I'm wittering away again as usual um, this remains a teaching channel so I will be going at a speed that beginners can keep up with me there's a speed widget up there feel free to use it if you want to speed me up a little bit um, as I have done for quite some significant time now um, as part of the, the teaching on my channel I've been explaining the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids because I have deep set eyes and it's amazing the number of people including the bigger beauty gurus that that say they have hooded lids when in actuality what they have are deep set eyes so I'm about to insert a clip here and for those of you who've not seen it before it's very up close and personal it's literally just my eyes so it's very zoomed in um, I will talk you through how to work out the difference between hooded and deep set eyes and I will talk you through the workaround for both types of eyes I have started to hear other channels starting to raise this issue now um, not entirely sure they all know what they're talking about but um, yeah this is this is me doing a crap ton again a technical term of research at stupid o'clock in the morning when I've been working with pain somnia and don't have the spare readies to buy some purchases so once the clip is done I'll be back to apply some of this to this huge clip now um, my eyes have this primer on it this is the Chrome Pebble primer in blank page cotton I do have a discount code for this it is not affiliated I don't earn money from it but if you use my code you save I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them the reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. 
white is the lightest the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black then there are three different skin tone shades as well so you should be able to find one that will work for you um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. And I am back. Right, now, if you have never used a loose pigment before, do not be afraid of it. Yes, they can be a bit messy. Yes, they generally have more fallout than a pressed pigment. But working with a loose pigment is no different to dipping your brush into a pressed pigment having kick up on the top and then going back and picking up that loose pick up, kick up for the second time round. The only thing you do have to do with these is tap off well. There's my little pot. There we go. And you can go in with either a wet or a dry brush, but I'm going in with a dry brush because I want to blend this. So I've dipped in and picked up the pigment and then I'm really going to tap off quite a bit so that I don't end up with hopefully too much fallout. Now that being said you will either get a crap ton of fallout or you'll have to keep dipping and dipping and dipping in to build it up whichever is your preference. So holding the brush right at the very end like I always do and because we're going to be using all one colour 
I can actually start down at the bottom here, windscreen wiper it through the crease. I cannot see a bloody thing right now because obviously I'm blinding the eye that's currently open, so I'm just relying on muscle memory to hope that I'm getting this in about the right place. There. You can see what I mean about kick up and fall out. So if you're using a loose pigment, it is always best to do your base afterwards. You can tap off like this into the lid if you wish, but it doesn't really take that much out. And then we're just going to do, like we always do, little circular movements going in this direction towards the nose. Bounce in the middle and reverse the direction to come back out. And all we're going to do is keep picking up pigment and building the colour up and then fading it as we come up the eye. Now, one and done looks can be very impactful. I'm, I've am i got one of the new... Regular viewers will know that I love this Renaissance flick. Well, they now do two additional colours. So they now have a brown and a blue. So I'm going to actually use the blue today and do a wing liner. Because a one and done shadow we use one matte colour and just blend it all the way over the eye and fade it up with a wing liner either in black or if you can get the matching colour like I'm doing here in the blue can be such a stunningly dramatic yet still very simple look. Now, the reason I do circles like this is because in about two and a bit weeks time I'm going to be 46 and I've lost 14 stone over the last few years probably a little bit more than that now actually I haven't weighed myself for a little while so 200 odd pounds that I've lost so the skin on my eyelids moves. And by doing circular movements in one direction and then in the other, means we're gently moving that skin around so you don't get tiger striping or bear patches. Now, I do sometimes struggle here and here with dry patches on my eyes, which once I've blended some of the colour tends to blend away. If you get the same thing, finish all your blending so your edges are as blown out as you want them. And then put a little bit of pigment on the brush. And just lightly tap the area where you've got a bit of a bearer patch or a lighter patch and just tap to buff it in like that. Okay. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this side. I mean one and done's really can be some of the most striking looks. Now you will notice with this eye in a minute that I will actually be pulling the lid out to check because if you can see these super deep creases here this is from when my eye can you see that tiger striping that's where my eye was pulled around when I was a kid and when I say a kid I'm talking five years old so we're talking 40 41 years ago now at the ophthalmic hospital when they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly 
ended up, for what we ought to use later, of leaving me with super deep creasing, which I don't have on this side. So I know it must have been related to that. Um, unfortunately, the circular movement doesn't work too well when I try that on this eye, as you could see. So I do have to gently stretch the lid out. Now, if, like me, you have similar issues where you've tried blending and it's not paying off, and you're still getting the bare patches and the tiger striping only stretch the part of the lid that has the creasing on already only stretch it as far as you absolutely need to and as soon as you have covered the area let go Otherwise, you are just going to make it a million times worse. I always get more fallout this side. And yes, I did dust across there because I put it on a bit heavier this side than this side. I will still go in with a micellar wipe to tidy up when I do my foundation in just a moment. But you can see how quick and how simple but effective that look can be. Right, always as soon as you're done, screw the lid back on your pot. Don't make the mistake that I did where you end up with it all across your kitchen floor. Thankfully, not with this pot, but with a cheaper pigment that I've been trying out at the time before I got these. Just taking the pigment off of the brush using a micellar cloth, as you can see. And now there's no pigment on it, I'm just going to go over this side. Just to pull a little bit of that excess pigment off. That's better. Right, my darlings, this was super quick to get to this stage. Um, I will be telling you a little bit more about the planet at the end of the film, but I like to keep the middle section about the actual makeup. So if you're someone who's got no interest at all in the astrological or uh, zodiac elements of the film, you can just concentrate on the makeup bit in the middle. So, I'm going to pause you while I go and chuck some foundation and whatnot on and I will be back to finish off this eye look. Now, um, I'm probably not going to film myself doing the wing liner. I do have a separate mini tutorial where I go through doing wing liner. Okay, But when my eyes are so watery at the moment, I'm going to have to keep stopping all the time so rather than constantly having to keep doing an awful lot of editing and you suddenly seeing my head jumping from left like this sort of thing where I've changed position, um, I'll probably do the wing off camera on this occasion. Now, for you, there's going to be absolutely no delay at all, but I've got a little bit of a wait now to talk to you until the next time I press record. I am back. Okay, I have done my winged liner. Now, <clears throat> one of the things I've noticed with the blue one is it's it's not as precise. Can you see it's going fluffy around the edges? The black one doesn't do that. Now I don't know whether it's because it's brand new. Um, and maybe as it dries up a little bit it'll 
it'll behave better but that's really frustrating because that's one of the things that I loved about the black version was that it didn't fluff like that in your lines um, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on that right my favourite smudgy brush again this is flat top but chunky it's the one that came in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette and I'm going to very 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 carefully smudge this along my lower lash line trying to minimise as much fallout as possible you know normally I would go in with a darker shade and then blend out with a lighter one but we don't have that option because the planet is literally just pale blue I kind of cheated a little bit adding a darker wing like that although I suppose that could be the shadow couldn't it on the darker side of the planet I nearly said dark side of the moon then. Show my age. Right. Again, I'm going to put the top on that pot very, very quickly. But you can see it's it's super easy to use loose pigments. Um, when you're first starting, yes, you probably will find it easier to use a pressed pigment. Um, simply because you'll have probably less fallout. But in terms of blendability and actually getting the colours onto your lid and blending together, Loose pigments are absolutely the way to go. They really are. Right, my darlings. I am going to pause you one last time. Actually, I need to put some highlight on, don't I? Let me grab... This is just a little um, highlight brush that I bought from eBay probably 10 years ago and this is the Ofra Nikki Tutorial Space Baby which is white based but has a blue shift to it so I'm going to pop some of this just up under the tail of my brow there And then in the middle bit, and you know I always bring it along underneath the eye and blend it in with whatever colour I've run underneath, which obviously today is blue. I feel like I should be singing, I'm blue, da ba dee da ba da ba that was out in 99 I think it was I remember it was playing when I was painting the woodwork in my kitchen at the time which at the time I was painting actually this shade of blue would you believe coincidences huh right as I was about to say before, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to chuck some more of this highlight on my cheeks and my nose and as Paige from Seeking Alexandra would call it, my chalupa chin. Uh, I'll put some mascara on, do something with my hair, choose a lippy and I'll be back with the finished look and just a teeny smidge of information about the planet itself. Once again, my darlings, for you, it's going to be instant. 
I am back. Sorry, I've had to put that fan on. It is so blasted hot in this kitchen. We've got no heating on, but unfortunately it's a south-facing kitchen, so it gets hot. But it does mean I get very good light for my films. So my films are usually daylight just with the two strip lights behind the camera, which is why it gives you a very good colour interpretation. What you see is what you get, basically. So as you can see, I... Chuck some more of that highlight on. Uh, the lipstick is one of the new ones from Revolution Pro. It's the Hydra Matte Liquid Lipstick with Hyaluronic Acid and Peptides uh, in the shade Swerve. Mascara is my little mini uh, It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara that I've been trying. And this is my finished look, inspired by Uranus. Still part of me wants to giggle at that. Which of course is the ruling planet of Aquarius. Now, while I give you a little bit of information about this particular planet, uh, if regular viewers could please double check they are still subscribed because YouTube are still deleting you and uh, I may still be appearing in your newsfeed even though you have been deleted. Please also double check that your notifications are set to all because a lot of people's notifications have been set to occasional or none. Which is lovely. Very helpful. Thank you, YouTube. So, the planet Uranus or Uranus. The planet's traits, or the traits which are associated with this planet, are originality, innovation, and shock value. But also, eccentric ideas, inventiveness, electricity, bizarre occurrences, reform and unexpected change. Now Uranus or Uranus was named after the father of Jupiter and Saturn. Unlike other planets its axis is turned to the side so rather than spinning, she rolls, which of course instantly makes me want to slip into a little bit of limp biscuit. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. That's quite enough for. Uh, <clears throat> but yes, those are the little bits of snippets that I have for you regarding the ruling planet for Aquarius. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this. If you got this far through, I'm guessing there was something you liked. If you're new to the channel, hi, hello, welcome, lovely to see you here. Do please join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. It's super simple to do. You see that red subscribe button? You click that, you turn it to grey, and then you tell YouTube about six million times that yes, you want all notifications, and you might get told one in four of my films that go up. Speaking of which, there are three other films relating to the zodiac sign Aquarius. Now, there are four films regarding Capricorn, and the other ten signs, well, I still need to film those ones. But, they will be done. So, as well as the zodiac or astrological films, 
I've got an awful lot of other films you can have a peruse through. I've got a lot of different playlists. Um, I've got challenges. I've got collaborations. I've got um, palette reviews. I've got little mini tutorials on things like how to do wing liner, how to work out your perfect eyebrow shape, etc. etc. So basically, we're all on lockdown. So, as I have said for some time now, and I'm hearing other channels picking up on it now, grab a drink, grab a snack, make a playlist, and indulge. Maybe not the relaxed playlist, because you'll probably find you go to sleep, but any of the others, unless of course you're tired and you need to go to sleep, in which case the relaxed playlist will be perfect for you. Do please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this, or a thumbs down if you didn't. If you're going to give me a thumbs down, tell me what it was you didn't like. Um, do you not like the astrological side of things? In which case, why did you watch the film? Uh, did you not like the fact that I am a teaching channel and take this slower than most? Which I told you about at the start of the film. Seriously though, if, if you have given me a thumbs down, at least tell me why, okay? If you are an Aquarius, let me know which of the four different looks that I have done for you, either the colours, the planet, the flower or the crystal, which one of those four looks called to you most. If you are not an Aquarius, which of the four looks called to you most and if you're not an Aquarius let me know which star sign you are because I would be personally very interested to see which star signs are drawn to which options. Right my darlings as ever all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fast and I will see you next time. Bye for now.